So I'm here with Gandalf from Atto Gals EV Adventures and he's going to tell us about this setup which is the caravan being towed by a Tesla on what we think is the first big lap of Australia with an EV and a caravan. Yep, I think that's us. <laughs> Great, okay, so let's take a look at some of those technical details then. Um, yes, yeah, so the most obvious change is, is we've added the aerodynamics to the front here and here. Um, we actually get quite a lot of storage space in there, but because we're weight limited, we kind of don't really use that as storage space. Um, and it also hides the air conditioner, which is in underneath. So, so this gives us a nice smooth surface. Um, if you turn around this way a little bit, you'll see that I've, I've actually deliberately lined the back of the car up to line up with the flight pick up off the off the airing, off the top of the airing. Yeah, okay, because it's really important to get that distance from here to here as short as possible for aerodynamic efficiency, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, okay. So so you custom made that fairing at the front end? This is custom made, and this is custom made, or, or this is custom made. Um, we did a bunch of testing, obviously, with uh, reversing and turning. So yep. When this was a uh, piece of foam, we sat it all on the, on the trailer and reversed and made sure we could move it properly without running from back of the car. Okay. Um, that's first major modification. The next major modification is underneath, um, all the way underneath the, the vehicle. The covered in red dust from the filbur, but there's uh, a big sheet of basically the bottom is sealed off to be flat underneath. I hope it's still flat. It looks pretty flat to me, but yeah, I mean, anyone that follows things like Formula One and sports cars knows that a flat underbody also reduces drag because reducing drag is really what it's all about, isn't it? For, yeah. It's very similar to the, to the Tesla, actually. So there's a lot of inspiration taken from the aerodynamics of the car. I fly through that. Okay, cool. Um, um, but not quite this bit because this is a bit different. I was constrained here with the original caravan. Um, the original caravan basically had... Uh, the wheel sitting here yep. and a mud flap down the back and that was it. Um, so I looked up the rules for what mud flaps need to be and where this needs to be protected from behind. Um, and I've made, again, out of uh, foam and fiberglass. Uh, well, actually, this has got um, headlight on it for impact. Um, and I've basically made a, an ellipse running in on both sides of the, to, around the wheels to sort of guide it, guide the, push the air in, in around the wheels. Um, and then at the back. All in the name of drag reduction because we know that from, again, sports cars and Formula One, that um, having an open wheel is a big, big drag thing. Yep. Um, and in fact, if we just look at the wheels on the Tesla, you can see those are that, uh, low, right. low drag wheels. Whereas if we look at this car next to us over here, those are high drag wheels. But yeah, okay, so back, back to back yep. to the van. Down the back here, um, I basically picked up the same the same line through here where the um, where the front arrow starts and brought that back and, and brought it back as, as up high up as I can. Yep. Um, basically to try and re reduce the area as much as I could of this, the back low pressure area of the back here. Yeah, okay. Um, so ideally what you'd want is a teardrop at the back as well, if you could. Yeah, 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 because then that would reduce it a bit further. But um, yeah, and you'd, you'd get rid of details like that. And um, but yeah, I mean, but I, you, you've done all the big ticket stuff, so. The, the oh yeah. Front arrow lines up. For yes, the, yes, it does. Yeah, how good's that? Yeah, look at that. So, so um, going to get less separation. Yeah, that was, that um, was the plan there as well. Yeah. And this one's an inspiration from the sixties. Oh, I think you lift it up and yeah. to check my tires and check, make sure that everything's going. Yeah, thank. I love it. I haven't had to do it yet, but. So why all this focus on drag? Well, aerodynamic drag is what kills EV towing range more than weight. And also for a given trailer, it will affect the range of an EV more proportionately than that of ice. How do I know? Well, I've done the tests. I've done this 106 kilometer test loop. I ran an Ionic 5 around it, and then I dragged a car trailer, 1300 kilograms, and that used 54% more energy. I then dragged a lighter J-Pod around it and found that it used 125% more energy compared to the base load. And then I dragged it, same trailers around using my diesel ute. And all of that you can look at in this video in more detail. Now a couple of other points, um, here is a trailer and a car and there's that gap between the back of the car and the trailer and you can see that the 
airflow basically creates drag and turbulence in there. So obviously if you were to minimise that gap, then you would reduce that turbulence and therefore drag. Now, how important is drag? Well, here's four different shapes. They're all the same frontal area, but they've all got different drag coefficients. And the first one has a drag coefficient of about one. And you can kind of think of that as a ratio. And then the next one, just a rectangle, drops it to 0.8. A circle is about 0.5 and this really teardrop shape is about 0.04 so that just shows you how much drag you can cut by streamlining and uh, using aerodynamic shapes and there's one other final point which is the speed squared law so if you double the speed you get four times the drag triple it nine times the drag quadruple the speed you get 16 times the drag so all of this is why aerodynamics are so very very important for EVs and particularly wind towing so take a look at this short clip from Betterflow and the truck closest to us has a fairing at the end and also it's got a smaller gap between the cab and the trailer and that has contributed to a drag reduction. Now have you had to make any modifications to the car? I mean, there's obviously the tow bar, that came from Stealth I think you said? That came from Stealth EV. Yep. Yep. That's rated to the full 1000 kilograms towing and Correct. yep. Uh, any other modifications to the vehicle? Um, oh. N not really, but we did add the wireless uh, reverse camera. So I think you said this was uh, 495 kilograms on the on the plate, yeah. but you put it on the scales and it was 680, which is pretty standard for caravans to be underreported. But um, that's still quite a bit. So 750 is what the Tesla can tow and break. So there's no trailer brakes on this, right? Uh, no, no, none at all. Not even an overrun. Oh, oh. They're, they're, no, there's not. No. Yeah, okay, looks like it might have had an overrun there at some point, but I don't think... So, okay, so that's 750, just a standard 50 mil hitch then. And I did like, yeah. jack this up because the Tesla's quite low. Yeah, so yeah. I added that extra highly fall in here to just try and bring the van up a bit more. Ideally, I'd like it to be level, but it doesn't quite sit level. Yeah, okay, we've got one... Um, oh, look at that, a rated shackle. Excellent, that's what okay. I like to see. Um, Engineers, mate. Engineers. Yeah, well, that's good. That's good. There's, you wouldn't believe how emotional people get about that that particular subject. Okay, so basically, that that's just um, bang on the limit for the Tesla Titan, 750 kilograms unbraked. So that's within limits. Yeah. A ton, a ton, break and 100 kilos on this ball. One percent. And so you basically ballasted it to make sure that that's. No, 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 hundred. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so how much does the car weigh? I can't remember on these. So it's about coming up to two tons, isn't it? It's one point eight. Uh, with all that, with all that, because we weighed everything as a as a rig. Yeah. Pack, yeah. Um, and we came in at. I can't remember. It was close. It was close to the two tons. Yeah. Okay. So you got two tons. Here, pulling 750 there, you're not going to have a problem with trailer sway. That's a good, oh, no. that's a great mass, mass differential. It, yeah. It's really nice. Really yeah, nice. and also obviously the weight's nice and central um, with the battery being low and, and so, yeah, okay, that's great. Okay, so that's probably the towing side of things then. Um, talk to us about the battery because what I'm intrigued here is that you're saying that you've added obviously a fair bit of solar there. I think that was what, 800 watts or so of solar? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that charges 15 or so kilowatt hours worth of lithium batteries in the van and then yeah then you can use that to charge the car which is a pretty smart way of doing it underneath here that's where the batteries live underneath that and there is the inverter the front here we've got a standard caravan park point for the for the caravan 15 amp 15 amp in, input from the park yeah um that runs into the inverter yep uh, and we've got a three phase. Mm. It's only single phase. Single only phase. One is connected, but it oh, right. can do thirty-two amps. Okay. Um, which, which means that when we are out where there's no power supply, yep. um, that inverter can produce five kilowatts. Yep. Yep. Uh, at twenty-five degrees Celsius. Yep. Um, so that can then put uh, basically five kilowatts out of there and into the car. Mm-hmm. Into there. <laughs> um, the uh, the um when we're in the caravan park uh then i can plug it in obviously to the 15 amps yep and the inverter is clever enough to take that 15 amps and then just pop it up from the battery and we can actually charge the car then at seven and a half kilowatts and you've got some 
flexibility there, and you could double charge because okay. you could, you could have the car charging as well as that, and sort of a indeed, indeed yeah, yeah. We can plug the car in straight into the fifteen amp caravan park point and charge at fifteen amps from the caravan park, and we can also charge the caravan at fifteen amps from the caravan park. Yeah, the, so off two, two points of it. I mean, it's not possible at the moment, but in future, you could conceivably charge the car as you drive. I don't think so. certainly not with this car. Because no, because it's software um, locked, isn't it? I guess. Well, there's, yeah. There's a safety issue. Yeah, and a safety issue and all this. But, but I mean, technologically, there's no reason why it couldn't be done. No, you could. The, you could run a. You could possibly run power into here and into the battery in the car. Yeah, but. I don't think I think that would be good because you want to get going early in the morning and you've had a roof full of solar from the previous night. You don't want to go, I'm just going to wait for half an hour when I get on the road. You, you just go and um, charge as, as, as you go. I think that would be pretty cool. We don't find that becomes an issue because okay. you drive for an hour and a half, two hours, yeah. and you're ready for a drink and a pay stop. and Then you stop anyway. You're stopping anyway. And you just plug it in. Yeah. Yeah. Plug, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Oh, so, good, good stuff. Um, and ideally, at some point, you probably also want to get regen off the trailer, wouldn't you? Um, it would be nice if you had a brake trailer. You might yeah. want to do that. Um, but because the car does the regen anyway, yeah. like all that kinetic energy... It's going in, into the car yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, and I figure the Tesla engineers are better at this than me. So yeah, they, but sometimes you can over-regen a car and, a, and the battery goes, you know what, I've, I'm overheating. At that point, the energy, on a really long downhill, it'd be nice to get some of that excess energy and just push it into the van. The only but, time I've seen hmm. the car um, not accept a full regen is when it's 100% charged, like fully charged. Yeah. Um, and it's a cold day, like a okay. really cold day, like a frosty morning. Mm -hmm. um, then it will limit the regen to maybe sixty percent of what it can do. Um, when we're driving around with this, like when we went to the top of Tambourine Mountain, obviously we use lots of energy to get to the top. Yep. Um, we left the top at like 47, 48 percent of state of charge mm -hmm. in the car. By the time we got to the bottom, we had fifty one percent state of charge. Oh, in the fantastic. Car, however far it is to get from the top of Tambourine yeah. Mountain to the bottom. Yeah. Now, um, rain price, you're saying that you've basically got an app which figures out where um, you can figure out where the next charger is, and then that gives you um, the target consumption yep. to drive to, so you vary your speed accordingly to make that, right? Yeah, yep. yep. within reason. Okay. Yep. Um, but then you're saying when, when there's DC charges, um, you just drive 100, 110, whatever the case may be. And by the way, the maximum towing speed does vary from state to state depending on uh, the weight of the vehicle and just whatever random other factors government regulators come up with. In WA, we're limited to 100. Though. Yeah, yeah. and in Victoria, you can do 110. Um, and in New South Wales, it's slightly different again. But anyway, um, slightly getting off that topic. Uh, so you've, you've got um, you've got that facility. Um, it's only really when you, you, you're not next to a DC charger that you need to worry about range. Yeah. Um, well, not even when it's not next to a DC charger. Um, it's when we're not next to a a charge point at all is where we're mm. concerned about range. Yeah. Um, where we only have the option of charging off of a caravan park point because it's slower. Yeah. Um, if we if we want to move quickly, then we're better off to slow down a bit, consume a little bit less energy, so that we don't have to charge for as long. Um, but everywhere where we've got access to a thirty-two amp three-phase outlet, so one of those with all three phases that pulled up. Um, yep. then we we don't mind so much. We can do, we can probably do 90 odd k's an hour and that means we stop for, we drive 200 k's and we stop for an hour and a half and we can do another 200 k's. Um, yeah, and pretty much all charge points are less than 200 k's apart. Yeah, yeah, and what I like about having the power um, on board is that you don't need to stop at a charge point to recharge your car. That's, no, that, no, that's no. something which would be a huge bonus for me because I could go, well, I've got 15 kilo hours on here. I can just dump that into the car and I can pull over at some nice spot as opposed to some godforsaken that's charger. We did between yeah, yeah. Sandfire and Roebuck Way Roadhouse and also between Fitzroy Crossing and Paul's Creek. Yeah. Uh, between Fitzroy Crossing, between Sandfire and Roebuck, it was quite nice. It was a nice little uh, park and it was fairly early in the morning, so we just had morning tea. But between Fitzroy Crossing and Paul's Creek, it was 46, 47 degrees Celsius. It was hot. Mm -hmm. um, so we, and the, the inverter, when I first plugged the power in, the inverter actually tripped out on an overtemp issue. Um, but what we ended up doing was just popping the caravan up, turning on the air conditioner. We sat in the air, in the air conditioning, had a cup of tea, charged the car, 
for maybe an hour, hour and a half, and then that was enough to get us to Falls Creek and with the next DC charger and away we went. Separate VMS in the to manage all the battery cells because the batteries are not the batteries are bought as cells. Right. Um, three hundred and ten amp hours per cell. Um, oh, so you've got a BMS to, to, to sort of manage all the BMSs, yeah, okay. Yeah. Battery BMS is battery management system, it's what you need to yeah. regulate charging. That, that yeah. monitors the yeah. relative levels of all the cells and yeah. Yeah. balances them out and makes sure that they are, that they don't go over voltage or under voltage or yeah. get too hot or any of the dangerous things that might happen that manage, that deals with all of that. That's mounted in the floor with the batteries okay. um, and then yeah. on top of that, the Vic one also had a bunch of speakers in there as well and won't over voltage things. Okay, cool. And um, what what sort of range different? I mean, you, we were talking before, you didn't have a chance to do a sort of before and after with the, with the van and also with the mods after the van because you've towed with it without any mods. Now you've made modifications, so we'll get that data at some point. But just anecdotally and roughly, um, how far would you get down a, a freeway at 100 k's an hour? Uh, 200 k's. 200 k's, yeah. So would that be from 100 to 10 or 100 to 20 or 100, would that be from 100% to 20 or 100% to 10? Uh, it's we, roughly. We, we meter it down. If we're range limited, we'll meter it right the way down to zero. Okay. Because so, I can monitor it to the watt hour, um, yep. or actually to the point one of a kilowatt hour. Um, I'll, I, we, we'll work out how what the number needs to be and then meter it down in. Okay, so you might get about 200 k's towing on a freeway, so you'd need to find a charger within that. Yeah. Um, now, is that purely off the car's battery or car plus trailer? No, just the car. Just, just the car. car. Okay, so you've got that flexibility that, to that go to varies. cars low, yeah. That probably yeah. varies plus or minus yeah. 20 or 30 k's, yeah. depending on headwinds, rain, how hot it is and how hard the air conditioner is working in the car. Um, so rain makes a uh, noticeable difference. Yeah, it does for yeah, it mm -hmm. does for any car. Yeah, but just you don't notice it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah. The fuel gauge is not as precise as the battery yeah. management in the car. Oh, the, furthest, yeah. the furthest we've done in just the car by itself was about two hundred and forty-seven kilometres. Yeah, and we did most of that at about eighty-five k's an hour. 85, okay. So what percentage of battery was that from and to? Uh, it would have been full to zero. There's a yeah. 48 volt to 12 volt DC, DC converter in there. Yeah. And that's what runs the winch and stuff to lift the van up and down. Okay, so thanks so much indeed for your time. Much appreciated. I think a lot of people will learn about that. And um, I'll let you get back to your adoring fans at the coffee table now. Yep. And I wish you all the best with, with your trip. No worries. Thank you. Thank you.